everyone, Dave here again, and the model rocket today is the Estes Solo, which is a, a beginner level boost glider. In fact, the, the glider itself is kind of unusual in that it's kind of this half cup shape. As with any model, you want to go through and check that everything is here, and I have on this one already. Um, the, my notations here are for later entry into rocketry simulation software. But don't have anything to do with the, the model we're building at hand. Um, one thing here, this sheet of cardboard with the designs on it, um, this will be used to make the glider itself. I set it aside right now. We'll come back to it later. <clears throat> so the first thing is to mark the placement of the launch lug. And so here's the actual launch lug. And with this, you'll want to find this little square sticker here. This will be used to reinforce it. Okay, so to mark this, uh, traditionally we would use a, a door frame. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use this rocket guide here. Besties makes this, and it's essentially a portable door frame. Um, but what this allows me to do is draw a straight line all the way down the length of this. Now it actually doesn't need to go the whole length. Uh, about half the length will do, and that's all I'm going to do on this. And you want to make this visible but light because we're going to go through and erase it later. And so you can see that there. I've actually made more of an indentation than a line, but that's fine. As I, it's just enough for me to see. Uh, if you can't see it in the video, it, trust me, it's there. And the next thing we need to do is mark an inch and a half from the bottom. Okay, or for the metrically inclined there, about 3.8 centimeters. So I'm just going to mark that right here. And now I'm going to take this a little out of order um, because what they're going to have us do next is the base of this. Let me see if I can get that in focus there. There are two little knobs that stick out from here. And what you want to do is put one knob where your little cross mark is, and then you'll line this up and press it into the cardboard. Now to make this just a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is cut a notch in that first. Okay, so essentially what I'm doing is just jumping ahead one. So after you make the indentations here, in the instructions they have you um, cross cut where those are and then finish gluing it on. What I'm going to do is cross cut my first notch here and that will give me a more stable point to anchor while I make the indentation for the other part that goes further up the tube. So I'm just taking my knife and cross-cutting at that mark at an inch and a half. And now I'm taking the launch lug here and putting one of the little projections down in that hole and then lining up here, and here you got to be careful you don't squash the tube. Um, and so, first, just line it up with your straight line there. I'm just going to press in a little bit. And now I've got that indentation there. And that's where my other little cross cut will go. I'm going to retest that. And this goes the same in either direction. So if you get it turned around, it won't hurt anything. I'm just going to kind of move that back and forth. The, the problem is, down here at the back end, I can get my finger under there and, and press against it. My finger's not long enough to press against the forward part, though. So you got to be a little bit more careful there. Okay, and next it shows to first glue and then put the little sticker here over it as a reinforcement. Uh, for this you can either use 
the tube type plastic cement or the gel type um, super glue or cyanoacrylate glue. And I am going to use the latter. And so here I'm just going to run a bead of glue from just beyond the hole down the line. Just beyond the second hole there. And now I'm going to place that in. And remember, this stuff bonds instantly to skin, and I just got some on my thumb. So always have a tissue or a paper towel handy. Alright, and once again, now I'm going to as best I can, support the back with my finger inside it and just squoosh that down. And it should be just enough in there to go to the edge. You can see a little bit there, but not so much that it all squishes out and makes a big mess. And now we take our little stick-on reinforcement here. Peel this open. Try and keep your fingers off of it as much as possible or you'll end up with little fingerprints in there. Now the trick here is not to just set it on, down all at once. What we want to do is have it follow the edge of the launch lug. So I'm going to try and center this first of all as much as I can. All right, and now I'm going to press down on the top of the launch lug. But when I go to the sides, I'm going to use my fingernail to tuck it along the edge there first before I press down on the outer part. And I'm going to turn and do it the same way here. And I want to try and get as much air out of that as possible. Um, you won't. You probably won't get it all out. That's okay. And then once that's down, then you can smooth out from the inside toward the edge. I'm going to do that on both sides there. And this just helps hold the launch lug in place while the glue sets, and it also reinforces it and gives it uh, more strength going across the entire airframe tube there. So we can set that aside. For the next part, we need the fin can. And it comes in two pieces here. Now, on some of these fin cans, they've only got three fins, and so they never have a fin of the seam. But this one, since it has four, fins will go in, in at the seams here, which means that's going to be a weak point. So we need to be particularly careful when we glue this together. And for that, I am going to use some brush-on uh, plastic cement. Here I have some brush-on type uh, plastic model cement. This is very, very thin stuff. And this allows um, greater control since it brushes on. But it also means it doesn't fill spaces very well. And this is best used in situations where you have tight plastic to plastic contact. If you're gluing plastic to something else, I recommend using either the tube type glue or the super glue. But here I don't want to get glue into the spaces where the fins need to go. And in fact, the instructions show just gluing the little tiny guide knobs on here. However, I know from experience that it needs more than that. Otherwise, these cans tend to split open as soon as you put a motor in them. So I'm going to just I'm going to go ahead and glue the surfaces that articulate. So anywhere there's a gap like this, I don't want glue in it. So I'm going to go all the way down here. And the threads are good to do as well. Just make sure you don't get too much. You don't want stuff down in the threads themselves. And 
unfortunately with this really thin glue, even if you get some down in there, um, it won't make a big bulge. Now one of the drawbacks is this stuff dries really quickly. So sometimes you have to recoat it really quick before we're done here. So I'm just gonna hit all the surfaces one more time. Alright, and now we're gonna very quickly put this together, making sure it all meets up. Now I'm just gonna hold this together like this for a good 60 seconds, and then when I come back here, uh, we'll start looking at putting the fins on. While I'm waiting for the fin can glue to set up, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead here. We're going to assemble the nose cone. And this is pretty straightforward. Um, for this I'm going to use the tube type plastic cement. And I'm just going to run a bead of this on the inside. You don't want it too heavy, but make sure that you've got even glue all the way around. If you get too much in there, it can actually melt the nose cone. I had that happen once. It wasn't good. Alright, but now I'm just going to put the base in and just give it a little bit of a twist there to seat the, the glue and spread it around. And that part's done. So I can set it aside again. And coming back to our fin can. Now we have two types of fins here. So these two short ones, these are what will mount to the glider, and then the two longer ones will go opposite them. So when these are assembled, these two fins should be adjacent to each other, and these two fins should be adjacent to each other. They shouldn't be opposite. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do a dry fit quickly here, and if if you're worried at all about your glue not being dry, just wait a little bit longer for this step. Alright, so I'm going to make sure that goes in. That one works okay. Alright, okay, and then we've got another one here. Alright, so those two fins should be next to each other, and then the two glider mount fins should be like that. So when we're done, um, it'll be lopsided looking. It should not be symmetrical. I'm going to pop those out again. Okay. And I had a, a viewer comment on one of my other rocket kits that use the same type of uh, fin mount here. Um, one of the things that you do have to watch for is that if you get your glue on here and then it gets a little bit dry, you get like halfway up, um, you may have trouble getting that fin all the way into position. And he had suggested dry mounting the fin and then applying the glue along the edge and allowing that glue to work its way in by capillary action. Okay, Which it will do, although glues like this um, are what we call non-polar, which means they don't stick to other um, charged surfaces as well. And capillary action in water actually depends a lot upon those charges. It will still get in here, um, although I don't think it will give us quite the same strength as if we directly glue it. But the nice thing about it, if you do find little gaps in the glue in there that you want to fill in, this stuff will work quite, quite nicely. Um, and his method of doing it afterward does alleviate the potential of getting a fin stuck halfway in and having to essentially throw away the rocket. Okay, So you can do whatever you're comfortable with there. Um, here again, I'm going to use the thin stuff here as it gives me a little bit more control. Um, but you can use the regular tube type glue as well. And I'm just going to brush this onto any of the surfaces now that we're going to articulate with the fins. And so these narrow regions here, I will hit the inside edge as well as the surface. These bigger gaps won't be in contact with anything, so we can leave them alone. Those are just where the tabs slide in. All right, and I'll get it back here. Uh, if you want to get these ultra strong, 
you can also put some glue along the bottom edges of these. Um, but again, there you're going to run into problems with this drying up too fast. In fact, it's trying to do it already. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue there. The nice thing, since this does dry fast, you don't have to wait as long. All right, so we're going to do the, the two big fins first. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that in and let that sit. And it will hold itself there so we can go immediately to the next fin. Now this one is on a seam. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure I hit that seam really well with my glue to help reinforce it. All right, and then again, I'm going to just hit the articulating surfaces. Take my other large fin, place that in, slide it up. Now I'll do the two smaller fins. They're going to go in just the same way, they're just not as big. But the gluing procedure here is exactly the same. If you're using this thin stuff, you may have to overcoat it very quickly. All right, and this should go in with this peg facing forward. And here again, I've got a seam, so I'm going to go ahead and be sure to get some glue down in that. Same down here toward the very aft end. Okay, and then very quickly overcoat those surfaces, make sure they're still wet. And we pop in our last fin. Okay, so at this point I'm going to let these dry. And then if I need to, I can come back if there are any air gaps along the edges here, you can fill those in with the thin glue here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit on its own for a while and let it set up and harden. Now that my fins have had some time to dry, the next step is to assemble the fin can into the body tube. Now here we need to make sure that the launch lug ends up in the right place between the fins. So when we put this together, we want this launch guide, launch guide in between one of the large fins and one of the glider mount fins. So just make sure of that when you put it in. Uh, again, here since we're going from plastic to cardboard, either use the tube type plastic cement or the um, gel type cyanoacrylate, and I'm going to use the latter here. And you can be fairly generous with this because when we push it in, it will push any excess up ahead of it. And you don't need to be sloppy about it. Um, but you do want to be generous enough that we fill in all of the gaps between the two. Okay. So there you can see the cement there. And I'm just going to put this in. I'm going to move it back and forth a few times here just to spread the glue evenly. And now I am going to center the launch guide between my two fins there. And now just set that aside once more and let that glue cure. And next we go on to the glider assembly. And so this is actually the glider. It looks like a backdrop from an Austin Powers movie. And the first thing we need to do is just, as much as you can, kind of unbend it. Um, this came kind of bent in the packaging. Uh, since we're going, it'll eventually get rolled like this, so you don't have to get all the um, bends out of it. But do watch if you've got creases or something like that. This has got a crease here, but that will get cut out. So just take some scissors and cut along the white line here. Too close to the 
camera. thing here is just try not to over snip so that you have little cuts going inward that will provide a weak spot that could tear later. Okay, and then what we're going to do is bring this together so the ends meet like that. And it's kind of unclear. It looks like they're putting some tape on that. Um, but I'm going to check this just to make sure. Okay, so this has got a groove in it, and it looks like you don't have to tape it together. In fact, I would put this in first and then tape it. Okay. So let's see, we got some excess here. So the trick here is to get everything in the groove at the same time. should meet at the line at the top of the ring there. Okay, so I've got just a little bit of gap in the cardboard and that I will now connect with just a little bit of clear tape. So once that's in, um, I can check my alignment again, scoot that around, and then I'll take some more tape and adhere the cardboard to the ring here. So you can see that. Okay, and they suggest doing it at three points around there. Here you want to make sure that as you do this that it stays seated in the ring. Now if you get one edge that comes out farther than the other then this will not be as aerodynamically stable as we may want it to be. Okay. Here this is going to be easier from this side. Put it on the plastic there, and then I make sure it's still seated down, and then smooth down the tape. All right, and fortunately, spectators generally won't be close enough to see the tape. Okay, so that's the actual glider there. going to fit like this on those two pegs. Okay, so it's going to fly in an upright position like this and then at Apogee when the ejection charge goes off, they'll kick that off. Now they got this part of the instructions a little out of order, so they've got the decals on and preparing the engine for launch and then attaching the shock cord. Right. Definitely don't do it in this order. 
we're going to attach the shock cord next. So for this, we need to come back to the front page here. And we just cut out this shock cord mount. You can make a copy of this if you don't want to muck up your instructions. Uh, or you can just cut out a scrap piece of paper. I really don't care if I muck up the instructions, so I'm just going to do it this way. So here's our shock cord. You know, what we do here is just fold this ahead of time at each of those dotted lines. Bring this back so I'm gluing over it. And I'm going to unfold this once more. And here you'll need either some white glue or some wood glue. And just run a bead over the two and the three. And you get a nice film of glue here. You don't want it oozing out all over the place, but you do want it even. And now I'm simply going to put the shock cord over the two and the three areas. I'm going to do it at a little bit of an angle there. So I'm not going straight down. And then I'm going to fold the one over the two and get all the air out and squish the glue around there. And now I'm going to fold the two over the three. And this is why I offset the, the shock cord, because now the folded part will lay against the part that's on the base there. And once more, I'm going to squeeze that down, get the air out, and distribute the glue well. And I'm also now going to bend this to give it a curve, because this side will fit inside the body tube. And so while the, the glue and the paper is still kind of moist here, I'm going to add a little more glue to this. Again, we don't want this dripping, but we do, we do want a good film across the whole thing. Because this is what's going to hold the recovery system to the rest of the rocket. And this needs to be down at least an inch and a half into the body tube. And that's so that the uh, shoulder of the nose cone does not uh, end up getting caught in the recovery system or having the recovery system get caught up against the inside of the body tube there where it won't do any good. And so I'm just going to slip this in first of all. And I want to get this down as far as I can reach. And now I'm just going to flip the whole thing over. That will put the glue side against the body tube. And now I'm just going to take my finger and put that down as far as I can go. I use my longest finger here, and now what I'm doing is bracing my left hand against the back of the rocket and using my finger to completely press that mount up against the interior and get all the glue nice and evenly distributed. I don't think yeah, it's too dark, can't see down there, but. The good thing is you can only barely see the shock cord now, which means it's down far enough. Right, so I'm going to set that aside once more and let it dry for a little bit. Now our last structural task is to assemble the parachute. And this is already pre-assembled, so all we have to do is gather all of the shroud lines together here. And I'm going to move my camera back a little bit. Right, so the easiest way is simply grasp the, the top of the parachute in the middle and then grasp the shroud lines and pull them taut. So I've got them on one finger over here. And then I can just shift a little bit to get all of the corners of the parachute as even as I can. So if we go back here to our instructions, um, Estes always shows more or less permanently mounting the parachute to the nose cone. I am not going to do that. 
Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll, you'll see why here. I prefer to attach a snap swivel. And so for that, I'm just going to take my loop of shroud lines, pass them all through the swivel side, and pull that through to give me just enough loop here. Now I'm always keeping a hold of one end to the other so my shroud lines don't change in length. And now I'm just going to loop over the snap swivel, pull them down, and then that tightens right up against the snap or the swivel end. And I can recheck here. It's still pretty much as even as it was before. And now this snap part can attach to the nose cone. Now depending on how thick this loop is on the nose cone, that will depend on how that's going to, how do I want to say it? That will determine which size of snap swivel you need. Um, any size snap swivel will be more than strong enough for the stresses put on the rocket, but the snap side has to be big enough to fit through the eyelet of the nose cone. Okay, so that's going to fit just nicely there. And the other benefit to this is that as it's coming down, parachutes tend to twist and turn. And this swivel here helps alleviate part of that. But it also means I can change my parachute out easily. So if I damage the chute, it's easy to put another one on. Um, this is a fairly large parachute. It's 17 inches corner to corner, um, which is really a kind of odd size, too. Estes has been coming out with more and more odd-sized parachutes. Um, but you might decide that, especially if it's like a, a really windy day, um, or if you're going to shoot this up really high that you don't want it to drift as far, you might change out and put maybe a 12 inch parachute on it. The last thing we do, and I'm going to take the, the snap swivel back off for this, uh, but all we need to do now is tie on the shock cord. So this just passes through the eyelet. There we go. And then just make a couple of half hitches on this. All right, pull that tight and then pull it from the direction of the rocket here and make sure that it doesn't come undone. Uh, and then I usually cut this off so there's just like half a centimeter on that side. If it's too long, it can get stuck up here between the nose cone shoulder and the body tube, and that will make it so it won't come out at ejection. That's a not a good thing. And then I'm also going to put just a little dab of white glue on here. And this is just going to help hold the knot in place. So I'm just going to work that into the knot a little bit. It's not actually going to hold to the, the eyelet here. It's just to keep a little bit more friction inside the knot there. One of the nicest things about this rocket is that it comes completely pre-colored. You don't have to paint it, although you could if you wanted to. Um, and then it just has this one sticker that goes on. And so it's showing the decals here um, basically on the opposite side of the launch lug. That's so everybody can get a good look at them. Uh, you may want to make sure and wash your hands before you do this so you don't get a lot of skin oil and debris on there. My hands always look that dry, so it's, that's normal. And then we just peel this off. And they've got it centered more or less, so I'm going to attempt to do that. And what you can do here is just lightly lay that down. Um, and then you can check it. It's not quite straight, but I'm going to leave it there. I think I'll do more damage than good in moving it. And then just squish it down from the middle to the outside. This will take out most of the air. And then we've got the two little SD stickers. Oh, 
It's a good thing they give you two. Is that one almost ripped here? Let's see, I think I can salvage it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to put that one between the two fins, just like that. And then you can put the other one wherever you want to. It doesn't really show um, in the illustrations here. You put it on the other side. Uh, I'm actually going to put mine on the nose cone. So I'm going to peel that off. I'm going to put it right here at the base. Just like that. Okay, this rocket is done. So if we put the whole thing together, now I, I do still have some damp, if not completely wet glue on the shock cord mount. So I'm not going to put the parachute in here, just in case. But assembled, um, it's going to look something like that. Okay. And then we need to put the engine retainer cap on there. And then our glider goes just like that. Okay, so there, can't get this in one view, so we have to kind of go along here. Play dramatic music if we need to. Alright, so that's my solo. And again, this uh, went together in about an hour, so this is easily an afternoon project. If you, you start it you know, right after lunch, you can fly before dinner. And with that, I hope you have a good flight of your own, and I'll see you next time.